fabulous teachers! Welcome to my free webinar all about cross-curricular fun for February! Welcome so I'm so excited to be here with y'all today. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, Ala, thank you so much for being here. Hi, Janina. Hi, Layla. I am so excited. So February is one of my favorite months, y'all. I know I always say that about every month, but this one is jam-packed full of greatness, okay? So um, go ahead and comment and tell us where you're from and what grade that you teach. I would love to see or hear where you're from. I always like to see where we have teachers from all around the world joining us today. Hello, Gina. So glad you're here. Um, so just a couple of housekeeping things. Um, I know we have some new teachers in our group today. So welcome to all the new teachers who have joined. And um, my face might freeze on the camera because my Wi-Fi is really slow, but my voice will keep going, okay? So don't freak out, it's okay. Um, even though my, my face might freeze, I'll come back on, it's okay. So um, I just have a little bit of a lag in my Wi-Fi. So um, you, if you're commenting today, you could be eligible to win some free resources. Okay, so hi Jill, so glad you're here. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? I'm gonna introduce myself again because I know we have some new teachers. Um, like I said, my name's Carrie Rickman. I'm the founder of Create Your Balance with Literacy. I'm a 24 year veteran teacher turned coach, mentor, and trainer um, to help teachers like you develop their craft in teaching cross-curricular. Cross-curricular is so much fun. So I've been teaching 24 years. I am GT and ESL certified. I've taught five years in third grade, 19 years in first grade. I've been the team leader for 12 years. I'm a coach, mentor, and trainer in my school district. I teach in Bernie, Texas, which is a rural um, community north of San Antonio in the Texas Hill Country, okay? Um, I have taught my colleagues math workshop, writer's workshop, guided math, um, behavior management, and I am CPE certified. So if you would like a certificate for today, um, message me after the webinar is over with on Facebook Messenger and I will send you a one hour certificate. And I'm also a Seesaw Ambassador and I was Teacher of the Year in 2009. So these are pictures of me and my family. I have had the privilege of teaching both of my daughters, Kennedy and Presley, in my first grade class and I loved it. It was the best years of my life. Um, and these are some pictures of uh, me giving some trainings to my fellow colleagues. Hello, Karen. I'm so glad you're here. Um, oh, Janina is from Texas. Oh, we've got a Texas girl. Yay, I know Jill is from Texas. Um, Layla is from the Oklahoma Panhandle. Awesome. Welcome, ladies. So I know you guys know this, but if you are new, I have a TPT store. Now, this is really awesome because after the webinar is over, I'm going to um, upload this free webinar into the Facebook group. You can download it for free. Anything that you see today, you can click on the picture. It'll take you straight to the resource. You can follow me on Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, and my blog and my podcast. Okay, so any of these links are clickable. You can um, join. You can also invite your teacher friends to join us that are on your team. I would love it. And I also have a email list if you're interested in getting weekly newsletters from me. My newsletters come out every Sunday morning. I know a lot of you that are watching today um, already get the um, newsletters. So um, in the newsletter, I have a freebie. I have a BOGO, which is buy one, get one free. I have a dollar deal. I have a podcast episode. I have a blog post. I have a tip of the week. I have a YouTube video of the week. Um, and also free webinar information that you can sign up for. So a lot of different things all jam-packed into one newsletter. And the theme of the newsletter always changes each month. So this is the one I sent out this morning. So if you're on my email list and haven't seen it yet, you might wanna check this out. Okay, so if you love what I'm sharing with you today and you want more, stay tuned to the end because you could have a chance to join my Cross Curricular Connections membership which is a subscription where all of your lesson plans and resources are already made for you so you can take back your weekends and your weeknights. So it's called Cross Curricular Connections Membership. So I will share with you what that looks like after at the end, okay? So exciting news, this is a webinar series. And so every month I get on and I, I show up live. 
I prepare um, a webinar for you guys every month and to share what's uh, a preview of the following month, okay? So this is going to be, the next one's gonna be about March. And so um, in March, I'm gonna share with you Gail Gibbons, author study, St. Patrick's Day, Texas Symbols, Texas Animal Research, Farm, 120th Days of School, Spring, Rainbows, Measurement, Reader's Theater, and Procedural Writing, okay? So you wanna check that out, okay? So, um, oh, Gina is also from Texas. Hi, Cheryl. So glad that you are here with us. So these are the four um, resources that you could win today if you're commenting, okay? So you could win my thematic unit all about We the People, America thematic unit, which has presidents and um, American symbols, um, voting and elections, okay? You could win that one. It has lesson plans. It has interactive notebooks. It has anchor charts. Um, all of those all of those things for about 30 about 30 different days worth of lessons, okay, for my thematic unit. The another thematic unit you could win is It's Raining Cats and Dogs, which is my weather thematic unit. So I am going to be teaching weather for the next two weeks at my school because um, it's in our science scope and sequence. Um, and so weather, my, same thing. It's got anchor charts. It has lesson plans, suggested mentor text, anchor charts, um, interactive notebooks, all the good stuff, writing craftivities in there. Um, so it's got the works. And then, or you could win the Money Madness, Money and Financial Literacy Math Unit, okay? So money goes perfect with presidents and American symbols. And so this one has suggested mentor text as well, anchor charts, skill, skill cards, vocabulary cards, money poems, interactive notebooks, suggested um, activities and games that you can do with, with your math teacher table. Um, so lots of great things, okay? Um, so anyway, and then, or you could win the voting and elections, um, story companion with grace for president, teacher for president, or duck for president. So since President's Day is coming up soon, it's February the 19th, then you could do a, a day worth of voting in elections for presidents. Um, this was really fun. You can have your kids actually do a mock election with Grace, Teacher, and Duck. Um, and then you can vote and give them a registration card, um, do some craftivities. They can, they can make a White House. They can write about being the president. I mean, it's super fun. So if I call your name, I'm going to pick three teachers. Um, and... If I call your name, you can choose one of those resources and I'll send it to you um, Facebook Messenger when we're finished. Now, everybody who is here today, you can download a free resource that's already in the comments, okay? So if you will scroll all the way up to the very top, there is a Google Drive link, okay? So you click on the Google Drive link, and this is my Valentine's Activities for Math Workstations. So in this resource, you have get games and activities, interactive notebooks, um, and skill cards. You have Friends of 10, Addition and Subtraction cards for Valentine's. It's all Valentine's themed. So if you are teaching um, kindergarten, first grade, and you want to do some Valentine, fun Valentine math workstations with your kiddos, download this um, link right here. It's free, okay? Only you guys that are showing up live today can get this for free, okay? So hopefully you can um, snag that while it's hot. So um, normally this resource would be $5. So you guys are getting an extra little bonus here, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and move on. I'm having a flash sale. So I'm having 23 plus dollar deals today, okay? Dollar deals. And so um, I posted it in the Facebook group earlier today, so you can find that post to, with the link, okay? So I'm having a dollar deal uh, for Valentine's Day, Groundhog Day, President's Day, money, weather, and much more. So um, whatever you see today and you like, you wanna check it out, it may be a dollar deal, okay? Because there's about 25 of them, so. Um, exciting news. You guys are going to um, be all set to go for February. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and uh, snag our first winner today. Um, and let's see. I'm going to pick Karen Kendrick. Karen, you're my first winner, Karen. Woohoo! 
Congratulations, Karen. Ooh, that's awesome. So you can, um, if you want to comment in the comments about what, which one you would like, that's great. You can. That is wonderful. Okay, so let's go ahead and start wrapping our head around, around February. You know it's going to be February Thursday, okay? I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. January, I know January seems long, but it's long and short at the same time. So um, for February, these are the units that I typically like to do. Now, I don't spend a whole, a whole lot of days on each one. For example, Groundhog Day, that's only one day, okay? President's Day, okay, that's, that's one day. Um, Valentine's Day, that's one day, okay? So some of these units you can um, branch off into other things. For example, presidents, you can branch off into American symbols, okay? You can do weather. Weather is perfect for this time of year, okay, especially with winter. Um, and so the weather and seasons, that would be a great science unit to teach. Um, of course, you've got um, Anne Rockwell. Anne Rockwell is one of my favorite authors, okay? If you're not familiar with Anne Rockwell, oh my gosh, you're in for a treat. She's got so many great stories that fit perfectly in February. Perfectly. I mean, it's amazing. Okay, then you have a hundredth day. Okay, our hundredth day is February the 1st. You have money. You have money units going on. You have Black History Month going on. You have famous inventors going on. So um, lots of different things that you can pull from. You do not have to do all of these things, okay? You can pick and choose. Just pick and choose what works for you because my um, teaching style is different than your teaching style. You may take longer or shorter than what I do, okay? And that's perfectly fine. You just, you do you, okay? Um, I always get the uh, question, how do I organize my mentor text? So real quick, for those of you who are new, I'm going to share with you how I do this. And so in the back of my classroom, I have these cubbies and I have all of these teal baskets and I got these baskets off of Amazon. They are awesome gallon baskets. They never break. They never um, tear or bend or anything. They are so sturdy. They're so durable. Um, so I put labels on all the baskets and I have them organized by theme. Okay, so my thematic unit. So I've got American symbols, presidents in one. I've got objects in the sky in another. I've got weather in another and I, you know, so on and so on. So that's how I organize my thematic units were for my mentor text. And the kids don't touch these books. These are for me, just for me. And then um, for reader's workshop and writer's workshop and math workshop, I have these clear tubs underneath my computer table. And so I have them organized by skill. So I have those hanging file folders in each of the plastic tubs. So for example, writer's workshop, I have it organized by skill. So I would have nouns, verbs, adjectives, onomatopoeia, prepositions, pronouns. For reader's workshop, I could have text to self connection, text to world connection, cause and effect, story elements. So I have it organized by skill. So I can just pull out the books that I need really quick. If I'm in a jam and I need to find my book really fast, I know exactly where it is. It's really stressful whenever you have an administrator in your room and you are trying to do a lesson and you don't know where your book is. I've been there, okay? So I decided to organize myself this way. So it may work for you. I know other teachers have different ways of organizing, but this is just what I do that works for me. And then in my library, I always have thematic books out for the holiday, okay? So here's my Valentine bookshelf that I always put out for Valentine's Day with Valentine books. So this is how I organize my units. I'm still like a, an old school where I like to have a, a hard copy, a master copy of all of my papers that I copy. So I have binders and um, all of these cover pages are in my TPT store. If you wanna click on them later on and check them out, you can. And then um, I have dividers inside of the binders. And so inside of like America, American Symbols and Presidents, I'll have reading, writing, math, science, social studies, and art. Okay, I organized it that way so I can find exactly what I need in a snap. Oh, and poetry. Poetry's in there also, okay? So these are in my TPT store, and then I have a big cabinet that I just put all my, my binders in, and I just grab the cabinet. Grab, grab the cabinet. Grab the binder that I need. So we're going to start with Groundhog Day because Groundhog Day is already February the 2nd. Okay, so these are some books that I like to read for Groundhog Day. I typically just spend one day on Groundhog Day. I don't spend a whole week. So um, 
there's a lot of great groundhog books. You can look at all these books. Um, just Google them. Uh, Gail Gibbons has a great Groundhog Day book. I love reading her book. Um, it's Groundhog Day by Stephen Kroll. That's a, a super cute book. Um, Groundhog Day. Uh, Groundhog Gets a Say. And then there's a couple of nonfiction ones that you can also read as well. And then these are some um, fun craftivities that I like to do for Groundhog Day. Um, and so um, this is in my resource that is a dollar deal today. So um, you can go back to the Facebook post that I posted this morning and click on the link and then see all the dollar deals. So inside of that, you have um, all about groundhogs where they can make a groundhog with, out of hearts at the top, which is really cute. Or um, this story is if I were a groundhog, I would wish... Um, so here you're going to have the kids write about what they would want an early spring or not. Okay. So, um, and then this is what it looks like in the hallway, um, from my hallway display. I like to always have different bulletin boards, um, different craftivities up for all the different holidays and, um, thematic units. I love displaying the kids work. I love doing that. They feel so proud and they're so, um, excited to see their work out in the hallway. They love it. And then they show their parents. When their parents come, they can show parents or they can show the principal or their friends. I mean, they're just so proud of all their work. So I try to put them up as much as I can. Then for Groundhog Day, if you want to do a fun science investigation, you can do all about shadows. Okay. So if you live in a place where it's really sunny, I know that sometimes <laughs> you guys that live up north, it's not going to be this way. But um, if you want to take your kids outside and you can have them draw their shadows on the um, sidewalks, they can uh, model for each other and you can give them partners. Then they can take some sidewalk chalk and then they can draw the shadow on the sidewalk. And then they have a template that has six different boxes and they have to find six different shadows. So they could draw a, a tree shadow, a plant shadow, a flag shadow, whatever shadow they want to make. They can even make shadow puppets on the, on the wall or on the sidewalk if they want to do that too. So they are going to illustrate their shadows and then they come back in the room and um, they glue it into their science notebook. So every Friday I have what's called Fahrenheit Friday. They love Fahrenheit Friday. They look forward to that all week long. They love it. So... This is the day when I do my science investigations, my science experiments. Um, and so we do something that's very hands-on, something very engaging. We might either make something, build something, experiment, investigate, or we might go outside and do something. I mean, it's it, you just never know. So a lot of times we might make or build something um, and do a really quick experiment. But every time that we do experiment, we always go through the scientific method. Um, I always ask them to hypothesize. And then um, every time they have a template that they have to fill out because I want to see their evidence that they got the experiment and they understood it. So they have to draw a picture, illustrate, write a sentence, or they have to write the sequence that they went through for the science investigation. Okay, so that's really fun. So speaking of shadows, here's the template right here. So this is in that resource uh, for Groundhog Day, if you want to if you want to check that out later. Um, and then they can write facts about groundhogs. They can write four facts right here on this one. They can write a sequence of events um, from the Groundhog Day story. And then they can write um, the characterization. They can write adjectives that describe a groundhog. Um, and show them some YouTube videos of um, Poxitani Phil of the groundhog that is the real groundhog. Show them what the, a real groundhog looks like. Because some of them don't know. They've never seen one before. <laughs> so, um, um, let's see. Janina says, I'm old school too. That is exactly, exactly how I would organize my stuff. Yes, I know, Janina. I'm with you. I know. It's, it's easier for me to find everything. I do have Google Drive also, but I use Google Drive as a backup in case um, I don't have my binder or whatever. And, and let's face it, sometimes technology is not our friend. Okay? So, Yes, I'm so glad that you do that too. Um, so mentor text for Anne Rockwell. So Anne Rockwell is the author and illustrator. Um, actually, no, sorry. She's the author and her daughter is the illustrator. So Lizzie Rockwell is her daughter. Um, so she has Library Day. She has Big George. Four Seasons Make a Year. Our Stars. 
Valentine's Day, Clouds, President's Day, and 100 School Days, okay? So these are some great books. And then in the my newsletter today, I have a freebie, and I have all of these pictures, all these cover pictures that you can download for free, and this is what it looks like. So I have an author center, and every month I change out my author center to fit the theme, whatever that my theme is. Um, and so Ann Rockwell goes on my author center, then I just copy all the cover pages on a color printer, I laminate them, and I put them on my bulletin board. So when they go to the author center, um, they have to pick, the, pick their favorite book to read, and then they have a template they have to fill out that has the beginning, middle, and end, and then they have to draw a picture of the author, and then write the title and the genre of the story, okay? So this is a freebie if you wanna click on the picture later. And then I have two um, separate craftivities that you are that are dollar deals today. Um, so Valentine's Day is one of her books, and so we wrote about Valentine's Day um, with a girl and a boy um, inside of the heart, and so the the kids can write about what Valentine's Day means to them and why it's special. Or you can have them write about 100 school days. If you want them to bring 100 items, then they can make a jar. And um, they can put their, they can sh draw their items inside of the jar. You can have them bring something very simple, um, so they can draw or they can make something on inside the jar. And um, so they're going to write about their hundred things that they brought to school. And um, th yeah, I mean, you can do. An, it, the possibilities are endless. I mean, you can do so many great things with 100 days. Um, and then here's a hundred chart that you can have them fill out in color. You can have them do um, story elements. Um, text to self, text to text, text to world, um, Valentine's Day characterization, and then heart candy counting where they uh, show the different ways to make a number inside the 10 frame and then they write the addition sentence to go with it. Oh, and here's an acrostic poem about hearts and Valentine's. So super cute. Um, you just have to shrink these down about 86% or so so they fit inside of your notebook. If you use composition notebooks, I usually um, shrink them to about 85 or 86 Okay, now, weather, going on to weather. So, weather is super fun. Um, weather Words by Gail Gibbons is awesome. And then The Reasons for Seasons by Gail Gibbons is awesome. And then Anne Rockwell has one called Four Seasons Make a Year. I really, really like this season's book a lot because it goes through, it shows the same picture four different ways with four different seasons. And so it, it talks about how it goes in a cycle. And it's really awesome. So um, Patricia Polacco has Thunder Cake. Thunder Cake is wonderful to read for story elements um, or how to make a Thunder Cake procedural writing if you want to do that. What will the weather be? Feel the wind. Tommy DePaula has the cloud book, which is super fun. And then Shapes in the Sky. And then Anne Rockwell also has a cloud book as well. So this is my theme center. My theme center flip-flops between science and social studies, okay? So um, if you're new and you haven't heard about this before, my theme center only lasts for about two or three weeks, depending on the unit, depending on our holidays. And then so um, on my theme center, I have a bulletin board and I put um, all the academic vocabulary words that they have to know for the unit. So for example, they have to know um, the different weather tools and the different types of weather um, and the different kinds of clouds and the different types of wind. And then I have books on the top of shelf that they can play with. I have an anemometer that they can play with. Um, on Amazon, I got an anemometer with a, it's a kit and it has an, a rain gauge, a thermometer, anemometer, barometer, all in one, a little uh, play set that they can mess with and play with. Um, so that's really fun. I have puzzles. Um, I have um, like a reader's theater puppets that they can play with, um, lots of different things. And so I make it really hands-on, really engaging for their theme center. And I switch it out every two or three weeks. Um, so if you want to do how to make a thunder cake, this is super fun. And so if you don't know, Patricia Polacco has a recipe in the back of the book, the very last page. So if you want to make a thunder cake at home and then bring it with your bring it to school for the kids to eat, or you can make it with them, whatever you want to do, um, then you can write about it first, then next, and last, and then they can uh, make a topper that's, that shows the thunder cake. 
Um, so good procedural writing because I know a lot of us are doing procedural writing right now. Um, I know in my district we are. So that's super fun. And then I have an interactive notebook called my Focus Poem Notebook. Po focus Poetry is super fun. I do it every Friday. I do Focus Poem um, Fridays and Fahrenheit Friday on Fridays. All these words that start with F. Okay, so um, they draw a picture on the side, on the opposite side of the poem. They glue the poem in, and then they have to visualize what the poem is trying to say, or the author is trying to say. They visualize, they close their eyes, they visualize the picture, and then they illustrate it. Okay, so I have a big resource. I have a bundle that has all of these poems. Okay, so poems from the fall and poems for the spring. And so um, they have to highlight certain words that are in the poem. So let's say that um, I have just taught them adjectives. They're going to they're gonna highlight the adjectives in the poem. Let's say that I just taught them um, prepositions. They're going to highlight the prepositions in the poem. So it's a spiral review of all the grammar that I've taught them. And I just keep adding more and more and more as the year goes on. Um, and so it's really, really great. Poetry is so great for intonation and fluency um, and then just imagination. And then just they're just fun. So at the end of the year, the they have a whole notebook full of poems that they can take home and read over the summer. Um, and so their pictures are really awesome. I'm very picky when I have them illustrate a picture. I tell, I show them how to shade. So I break the crayon in half, I peel off the paper. And so they, they um, shade with the crayon on the big side, not the small side. And so they have to shade the background. They have to outline with marker and then color with crayon. And then I walk around and I pick the best one to show for bonus books. And you can imagine how they get to town and they color because they want to win those bonus books. So I give them $10 if they win. So every every week I pick a different person to show the class. And so they love that. So poetry is super fun. And then these are some of my anchor charts that I use for weather, the four seasons. And so I make I pre-make my anchor charts with the border, the title, and the picture. But the meat of it is done with the kids. And so the kids either draw on the post-it note or they write a sentence or they write one word like labels and so I'll have them write a season and I'll just open it up and say what write, write your favorite season tell me your favorite season and then they'll come up to the anchor chart and they'll post it and see if they can match the right tree with their post-it note or same with weather draw a picture of your favorite weather let's see if you know what kind of weather that we've been having or if you're um if we've been having like, you know, all sunny days or cloudy days, because I do weather and calendar time also. So we talk about weather every single day. So they could just draw their favorite weather and then on their post-it note, they can come and post it on the anchor chart. I do a lot of five senses in different seasons. How do we use our five senses in winter? What do we smell? What do we taste? What do we hear? Um, and then the weather tools, we talk about the different types of weather tools. Again, like my theme center had the pictures of the weather tools. Um, and then we, um, I have an, an interactive notebook page that has all the different weather tools on it. These are some writing craftivities that I like to do for weather. We do um, make a, we make a wind sock because um, one of our teaks um, is about different speeds of different wind, of the wind. Um, and so we make a wind sock and then we go out to the courtyard. We have a big courtyard at our school. And we go out and then we hold up the windsock and we, we test it out in different places of the courtyard to see which direction the wind is blowing, how fast or how slow it's blowing. Is it breezy? Is it calm? Is it crazy? Crazy wind. So um, is it gusty? Sorry, not, not crazy. Gusty. Um, so we can make a windsock that is super fun. Um, you can make a, a craftivity that shows the different seasons. Here, right here, you have the, the apple tree and it shows the different seasons. And then you have a thermometer for each season. And on the thermometer, they have to show the temperature that is for each season and then label them. Um, here's a little rainbow with the sun, with a paper plate. That's really cute. They can write about how to be a meteorologist, uh, facts about a meteorologist. And then we talk about the different kinds of clouds because clouds has a lot to do with the wind speed that we're having. Um, and so we talk about Nimbus, Stratus, Cirrus, Cumulus, um, and then we make a craftivity with the um, cotton balls. You can also make a pinwheel. Pinwheels are super fun also. 
Um, but I really like doing the windsock for Fahrenheit Friday, and it is so fun. They love going out to the courtyard and experimenting with the wind. Um, these are some interactive notebooks that I have for my weather unit. So um, if you uh, win the weather unit, this is all in that today. So you can look forward to seeing all that. So there's my interactive notebook with the weather tools. You can do a tornado in a jar. And I think the next picture has the tornado in a jar. Let me see. Okay. So here, if you want to do a tornado in a jar, you would put a marble and water and dish soap and then food coloring. And then you shake shake the jar and then you can watch the tornado come um, appear inside the jar. It's super fun. And it's really easy. Okay. So you can have them make a tornado to show the different kinds of wind. These are the weather words they have to know and then the, re the weather... Um, tools that they have to know and this is a weather journal so if you want your kids to track the weather during your weather unit you can have them do this during science um, or you can have them do it during calendar time to go along with your calendar graph or calendar songs whatever um, so or you could have them do it during reading time if you want to read a different book about a different kind of weather every day and have them do the journal okay there's a weather journal and there's a weather book the weather journal tracks the weather for each day, but the weather book talks about the different kinds of weather. So they can write facts about them, illustrate them, and then there's a table of contents that they have to fill out about the different kinds of weather too. So that's really fun. So you can click on this picture and it'll take you to the resource later if you want. Um, another fun experiment you can do is cloud in a cup. So take your clear plastic cups, and get some water, get some uh, shaving cream, put the shaving cream on the top, and then put the the um, food coloring and uh, drop it on the top of the shaving cream and then watch it drip down and watch it rain. It's really fun, okay? And then there's the shadow experiment again that I just showed you guys. All right, moving on to Valentine's Day, February 14th. So, Anne Rockwell has... Valentine's Day book, which is super cute. Um, Mary Englebright has Queen of Hearts. I love Queen of Hearts because it shares, it has a really good message about sharing and giving up what you have for somebody else so that they're happy. And it's such a sweet story. Um, the Day It Rained Hearts, Felicia Bond is super fun. Um, Arthur's Valentine, The 12 Days of Valentine's Day, The Valentine Bears, Valentine's Day is by Gail Gibbons, the biggest Valentine Day, the biggest Valentine ever, and Happy Valentine's Day, Mouse. So something that I love um, to do for Valentine's Day is we make a Valentine Zoo, okay? So you can have the kids pick an animal. This is a resource I have in my store. It's a dollar deal, okay? I have all of these patterns inside of the resource, okay? So they're all hearts, they are going to create an animal with their hearts. So you're going to have to show them how to cut a heart. Now, the, the uh, patterns already have the, the hearts drawn for them. But if you want them to fold the paper and then draw the heart, cut the heart out on um, half of it and then open it up so it's full to make it symmetrical, that is up to you. So there's a butterfly, there's a mouse, there's fish, there's an owl, there's a dog and a fox. Okay, super cute, really fun. Um, it really keeps them engaged during Valentine's Day because I know they're a little crazy because all they think about is they want to exchange those Valentine cards. That's all they want to do, right? Okay, yeah. So this keeps them busy, okay? And then they can write about their animal um, in their Valentine Zoo. It's super fun. If you want them to make a Valentine box for the exchange, you have them bring a shoe box or a tissue box. And then you can have them cover the box with um, construction paper or cardstock. And then you're going to take a big piece of construction paper and you're going to make a dome like um, like over, over top of the box. And then you're going to glue the sides so it has a dome. Okay. And then you can put a doily on it. You can put hearts on it. You can put um, those foam letters that make their name. Okay. So this is a, an example. And then you can make a little flag at the top with a heart at the top to make the flag. Um, these are another, these are the Anne Rockwell children that you can write about for Valentine's Day. This is the Valentine mouse in the biggest Valentine ever. Um, this is super fun. I love this story also. The two little mice that argue about <laughs> who has the best Valentine. 
and then they end up ruining each other's Valentine, but that at the end they help each other make one, and then they make a huge one. And then this is the day it rained hearts. They have an umbrella, they have the hearts raining down in the clouds, and they, they can write about first, then, next, last, and do a sequence of events if you want, um, or write about the day a day that it rained hearts for them and make an imaginary story. So there's a lot of different options that you can do in um, in the resources. So those are some different things you can do for that. And then I also have some writing craftivities for procedural text. So how to make a cupcake, that is super fun for Valentine's Day. Um, so they can uh, write a recipe for how to make a cupcake or you can have them how to make a Valentine box. If you make a Valentine box during the day and you make, you make it with your class, then they can write about it and they can make a craftivity. So here's their mailbox at the top. Then they can write first, then next, and last. And then they have to write their materials and their supplies. Um, so how to make a cupcake and how to make a Valentine box mailbox are both a dollar deal. And then here's the Queen of Hearts by Mary Inglebright. Here has the crown and the heart. And then they can write first, then next, and last. So lots of fun things for Valentine's Day. It's a little overwhelming, I know, to see all this at one time. But I, f I find that the more that I keep them busy during those kinds of days, those crazy days, then the less that they're going to get crazy. So the more that they can do and be keep busy, because at the very, very end of the day, I have them exchange their Valentines. And so they um, line up their boxes outside in the hallway, and then I call tables one at a time to go out there, and they put their Valentine cards in the boxes. And it's really not not a big deal. It's super quick. So they just I just take turns with different tables. I don't have the whole class go out there. That's too much. So, and I keep teaching and I keep having them work as I call the different tables outside to do that. So just something to think about. Then you could also do word work for Valentine's Day. You can have a mystery word. Okay. So this is also in um, my TPT store. This is, this is in Queen of Hearts actually. So you could have them, um, you could have them make words with the, with the letters that make Valentine's Day, but you don't tell them what the mystery word is. They can just come up to the pocket chart. They can move the letters around. You could even have this as a center if you want to, a word work center, and have them make words with the word Valentine, and then see if they can actually make Valentine as the big word, the mystery word. And then they can have this template. They write the words that they made, and here they make a list, and then at the bottom they glue the word Valentine at the bottom. So that is really fun that you can do for word work if you want a word work center, really fun. Um, these are some uh, interactive notebooks that you can do for Valentine's Day. So this is the Queen of Hearts. They, they can do characterization and they can write adjectives about the character. This is fun if you want to do a science experiment with the conversation hearts. You can have different jars of different liquid. You can have water, juice, milk, vinegar, and oil. Put the conversation hearts inside and then they're going to predict which one is going to melt the fastest, which one is going to melt the slowest. Okay, and they're going to draw, um, after it's all melted or it's all over, then they're going to draw what the conversation hearts actually did in each one, um, and then color it and glue it in their notebook. Here is a heart roll and subtract page, um, fact family page, lots of different math Valentine things that you can do, okay? So again, that those are dollar deals, okay? So now we're going to move on to presidents, presidents and American symbols, okay? So President's Day is February the 19th. Um, these are some really great President's Day books. And Rockwell, again, has President's Day right here. Um, and then My Teacher for President, Grace for President, Duck for President, Our White House, um, President's Day, Nonfiction, and then I am Abraham Lincoln, I am George Washington. So those are some great, oh, and then So You Want to Be President. So these are some great stories you can do. This is my theme center for presidents and American symbols. So again, I um, switch out my theme center two or three weeks for science and then flip flop to social studies. So I do um, either one. I don't teach science and social studies the same day or the same week because it's too much. I, I like to take more time with each subject and each standard and each skill. So I know that they understand it better because if I just teach that one skill in like 10 minutes, they're not going to get it. 
I, I'm going to be rushing. They're going to be rushing. And so if I do about two weeks or so on the same skill, it's so much better. And they get so much more out of it. They have so much more fun. They don't feel so rushed. Okay. And I still get everything in. No problem. I mean, it's just a different way of teaching. So if you want to do a uh, cross-curricular and do science in reading time, go for it. If you want to do social studies in reading time so you can still do science, okay, that's great. Um, that's, it's entirely up to you and um, how much time you have, you know, in your in your day. So I have the vocabulary cards. This is in the resource, the thematic unit for presidents in America. Um, the it has the the cards that you can put on the bulletin board right here, all the different American symbols, and then at the bottom I just have different flags that they can look at. I have books they can look at. I have trinkets. Um, I have puppets of George Washington, Abraham Lincoln. I have the hats that they can wear. Um, so different things that they can play with um, that are really fun and engaging. And then I have my class do an American symbols research book. So I give them this book and every day during social studies time, I have them, we talk about a different American symbol, okay? So we do the American flag, we do the bald eagle, we do Mount Rushmore, we do Statue of Liberty. Um, and then they have to write a table of contents. This is also a dollar deal today, okay? So this, t this booklet will take about two weeks because there's, there's so many pages in there. So I have a lot of different options for you you don't have to do all of them, okay? At the back of it, it has about the author page. They can fill out the author page and then they can fill out a page that says, what is my favorite American symbol? There's also a page in the back for glossary if you want them to write a glossary for the American symbols, okay? This is for Duck, Grace, and Teacher for President. If you wanna have a mock election for um, President's Day, if you're in school that day, um, then you can have them vote um, after you read those three stories, then have them vote on their favorite president. And um, you can give them a registration card that they can fill out, and then you can have a voting ballot that they can fill out here. Um, or you can have them post their name on the anchor chart. If you don't want them to graph, you can make a graph of all their votes that they made to tie it in with math. Hmm. Okay, lots of great stuff. So these are some craftivities that um, I can do or you can do for American Symbols. Um, George Washington, you're going to write about all the facts about George Washington. Or you can have them do a timeline, a timeline of his life, okay? So in our standards right now, in our social studies standards, we have, um, they have to write a timeline. Um, and so that would be perfect. Or you could have them write a timeline of Abraham Lincoln. And I do have them do the dates, okay? Um, or they can write about, if I were president, I would wish, what would you wish to be president or what would you do as president? And then they can choose an American symbol to write about and um, research, okay? So as you're reading the books for reading time um, for all the different American symbols, then during writing time, they can choose which American symbol that they like the best to research, okay? So you're modeling to them what it looks like to research and how you're gonna get your facts and then modeling how to write the story um, on your pocket chart or your um, smart board. And then they can write their own story and tell facts about their American symbol. So that's really fun. And that's also a dollar deal. Um, this is a really fun experiment with pennies, okay? You, some of you have probably done this before. So I, we always talk about how the Statue of Liberty has turned green because of the salt from the sea, from the ocean. So we are gonna do an experiment with a penny and we're gonna turn the penny a different color. And they're gonna predict what's gonna happen to the penny when you add vinegar and salt to it, okay? So I have two different cups. One cup has the salt in the penny and the other cup has the, the vinegar. And then they're gonna pour the vinegar into the cup with the salt and the penny and then they're gonna watch the penny change. Okay, now sometimes the penny doesn't do anything, but sometimes it does. So I would really get the dirtiest, ugliest pennies that you can find, okay? And then those usually turn the most, they turn shiny, okay? And so um, it's really interesting to, to see the change, the chemical reaction that changes with the penny. So they're gonna color how their penny looks like first in the cup, 
And then how does their penny look like after you added the vinegar and the salt? How are they the same and how are they di different? And then write about how they changed, okay? So this is the template that um, you, they can glue into their, their science notebook. Now, this is a freebie that you can click on later. So if you want to click on this, this is in Google Drive and it's a freebie, okay? So you can get that one if you want to do the pretty pennies. It's really fun. And there's a story that you can read called, Why Did the Statue of Liberty Turn Green? So if you read that story, before you do this experiment, they'll get a little bit more of a background information about um, the Statue of Liberty and why it turned green, okay? Another really fun thing you can do if you're into STEM or STEAM, you can have them build a log cabin for Abraham Lincoln, get a Chinette paper plate, get a, um, a milk carton from the cafeteria, make sure you get all the milk out of it, and wash them out, and then you staple them shut and then you're gonna get some stick pretzels and then they're gonna glue the pretzels on each side of the uh, the milk carton and then put it on their plate and then give them a piece of brown paper and then they can make the roof, they can make a chimney, they can make windows, um, and then they can draw a sidewalk and so they're gonna make Abe Lincoln's um, log cabin. So they can make that as a fun Fahrenheit Friday STEM project if you want them to. Oh, we're gonna have a second winner. All right, so, um, okay, our second winner is Alla Brinkley. Yay, Alla. Alla Brinkley, you're my second winner. Congratulations, Alla. All right, so, um, like I said, I will message you those free, a re free resource that you would like um, at the end of the webinar, and you will can get something for free. That's amazing. Now, if you just joined us, don't forget to scroll all the way up to the top. Um, there's a Google Drive link at the very top that is a freebie for everybody that's live here today, okay? It's the Valentine Friends of 10 Math Workstation resource, okay? So if you want something really fun for Valentine's Day for math, then go up to the comments, go right up to the very top, okay? And then you can um, get that one for free, okay? And I'm gonna take it down though after the webinar is over so you guys get first dibs on it, okay? So mentor text for famous inventors, okay? So going along with American symbols, along with presidents, famous Americans that are inventors is another great way that you can branch off of those things, of those topics, okay? So um, I am Benjamin Franklin, picture book of Thomas Edison, so you want to be an inventor, oh, the things they invented, young Thomas Jefferson, Alexander Graham Bell, and then the Wright Brothers um, book about to fly. Okay, so these are some great stories that you can read for inventors. And then um, these are some writing craftivities that are in my social studies unit. Um, it's called Let's Get Interactive. So I have, an, I have interactive notebooks for, for readers workshop that is um, all together in a bundle. I have Writer's Workshop, Anchor Charts, and Interactive Notebooks together. This one is the Social Studies one that is um, a bundle. So if you go to my store and click on um, February, and then you can find some of these. Um, and on the side, there's a custom category that has all the different categories of my store. Okay. And then you can click on um, the interactive notebooks in February, and then you can find this one. This is this is really fun. If you don't like making anchor charts, they're already made for you. They're already there. All you have to do is um, print them out in color. Um, they don't have to be in color, but you can put them on your smart board, or you can put them on your document camera, and they're already made for you. There's two different ones for each um, anchor chart. There's one that has the post notes on it, and the one without it. Okay, so you get two different choices. And then there's some craftivities um, in these resources. I have a craftivity, I have a story companion for George Washington Carver and Thomas Edison and Benjamin Franklin. Okay, so these are also a dollar deal that you can go and look into um, after the webinar is over. So those are fun inventors that you can um, talk to your kids about. And then these are, some, <coughs> excuse me, these are some interactive notebooks. <coughs> So I have um, a sequence of events, all about Thomas Edison, all about Benjamin Franklin, and then story elements, all about Thomas Edison, 
And then um, story elements are characterization for Ben Franklin. So these are some interactive notebooks that you can do. Remember to shrink them down about 85%. And then in February, we also have Black History Month. So I have, these are also dollar deals. George Washington Carver, Rosa Parks, Harriet Tubman, okay? These books are perfect to read by Brad Meltzer. Um, I am Harriet Tubman. I am Rosa Parks. I am George Washington Carver. These are so good, so great to read about these um, famous Americans. And so um, you can have them write all about the person and do a biography. Teach them what a biography is, okay? It's a story that tells all about someone's life. So you're going to write about what they did. Um, just write facts about what they did, okay? And then you can have them make the topper and color it. And if you notice at the top of these um, writing craftivities, I have the border of the construction paper that I still have on here. So I teach my kids when they cut out the border from the paper, they have to leave a one inch border around the, the top. So it makes it look really nice, like pop, it makes it pop. And then they glue the story onto another piece of construction paper at the bottom and then I staple the two together and that's their story that gets hung in the hallway. Super easy, okay, and super cute, okay? Oh, Tammy said you can't find the Google link. Okay, let's go back all the way to the very, very top. Um, it was the very first, um, it was the very first thing that I posted in the comments, okay? There's a Kajabi link, which I'll talk about in a minute, and then above the Kajabi link, there's a Google Drive link. Um, sometimes you might have to uh, refresh if you refresh your feed. Um, sometimes you sometimes the com all the comments don't show up all the time. I don't know why, but try to refresh it and see what happens. But thank you for telling me. Um, so hundredth day, like I said, our hundredth day is February the first. So you can read hundredth day worries, our hundredth days of school, rockets one hundredth day. Um, 100 school days, Emily's first 100 days of school. There's tons of great books. The night before the 100th day of school is fun. Miss Bindergard Miss Bindergarten celebrates the 100th day. So those are fun. And then I have these dollar deals also. This is Rocket. Um, Rocket is the little dog. There's Rocket Learns to Read, Rocket Writes a Story, and Rocket's 100th day of school. Um, and so they can fill out this 100s chart if you wanna have them fill in the missing numbers. And then that's, that can be the bottom of their craftivity. And then, um, so you find uh, the, the topper, the, the rocket topper, and then you have them cut around the um, border, around the, the, around the dog. And then, um, or you can have them do 100 days with the 100 chart at the bottom. And then um, you can have them fill in their 100 day jar, okay? So... That would be fun to do for 100th day of school. Um, ladies, if you can't find the, the link, it's okay. I'm going to, I'll, I'll uh, link it again in just a minute. I'll put it in there again for you guys, okay? Um, so don't worry. No, the first comment, let's see. Yeah, sometimes the, all the comments, they don't show up for some reason. Um, it's so weird. I don't know why it does that. But let me see if I can, hold on one second. Let me see if I can copy it. And I can I can link it again. Hold on one second here. Okay. So I just linked it. I just posted it again. Okay. So let me know if you see it. I just posted it again. It's under under Tammy's comment where she says thank you. Okay, see if you can click on that one. Okay, um, so sorry about that, guys. You're welcome. <laughs> I hope it works. Okay, so mentor text for financial literacy and um, money. Okay, so money, like I said, money goes along with um, President's Day and American symbols. So you can read the Penny Pot. You can read Penny Benny's Pennies. Trouble with Money, Dollars and Cents, A Quarter from the Tooth Fairy, Curious George Saves His Pennies, Once Upon a Dime, Follow That Money, and A Chair for My Mother. Okay, those are some great money books you can read. 
Um, this is also a dollar deal in my store today. And um, this is math activities for counting money. So this is a game that you can teach your kids to play. It's super easy. It's kind of like bingo. Um, so they have to color, they have to roll a dice and they cover the correct coin that the dice says. So if they roll a one, they're going to cover a penny. If they roll a two, they cover a nickel. If they roll a three, they cover a dime. If roll a four, they cover a quarter. If they roll a five, they lose a turn. And roll a six, they roll again. Whoever covers all of their coins first wins, okay? So I typically teach all of my math games at my teacher table first. I always teach the games at my teacher table before I put them in my math tubs. I never put a new game in my math tubs before I teach it, okay? That just causes way too much chaos and I get interrupted way too much because they don't know what to do, okay? So I teach it first. And you don't have to teach it many days. It's just one or two days for them to practice it and then they know how to do it, okay? So this is really fun that you can, um, it's a dollar deal, so you can find it in my store. Um, in the money unit, you have um, interactive notebooks that they can color. So here's a cupcake. They can cut out the pennies and it's 10 cents. And they have to write the cents sign inside of the price tag. And they cut out the pennies and they glue them at the bottom. Or you can give them this one. They color all the pennies, heads and tails, okay? And then I have these anchor charts that they have to tell me who's on the head side, who's on the tail side. And I always give them a penny. Like every time I teach a new coin, I give them a penny to look at, okay? They look at it, they observe it, and then they tell me what they notice about it. Or they can turn to their neighbor and partner up, and then they can um, tell their neighbor what they notice about the coin, what, do, what can they read on there? Who do they think the president is? What's on the back of the, ta of the tail side? So then we talk about it. And then I will um, have them draw a picture. And then they can post it on the anchor chart. So I give them the post-it note. And then they draw a picture. Or they can write a sentence. Or they can write a word. Whatever they notice. And then that's how we introduce each coin. And then we count them, of course. We count money every single day in calendar. Every single day. So... Let's say that um, tomorrow is January 29th, okay? So tomorrow we're going to make 29 cents, okay? And then January 30th, we'll make 30 cents. So I have a pocket chart on my calendar, and we make as many different ways of 29 cents as we can. And I start that on the first day of school, okay? So every month we're making 1 cent to 30 cents or 31 cents, and we'll do it over and over and over again. And by the end of the year, they know how to count those mixed coins. Okay. And then we count them together. I'll call up some kids to the calendar. They're going to count the coins. They get a dollar for each um, one that they count. So it's, it's, really, it's really great because it's, they need that recursive review of mixed coins. That is the hardest thing for first graders to do is count mixed coins. And... Our second grade teachers, they always tell us that we need to practice more of counting mixed coins. So we do it in calendar time so we can do it every single day. Same with nickels, okay? Here is the interactive notebook. They have a hamburger. They have to cut out the nickels for 35 cents. And then they glue it at the bottom. They put the cents sign in the price tag. They have to know how to write cents, okay? And then they color in the nickels, the heads and tails side. Um, I give them a nickel. They turn to their neighbor. They can tell what they observe about the nickel, okay? they we, I read Trouble with Money. I love that story. That's a great lesson to learn, okay? Oh, yes, Kendra, I'm sure it is hard for second graders also, yes. It's a it's an ongoing thing that they have to practice. <laughs> um, same with the dimes. So I read Once Upon a Dime, and then they have to uh, color in the, the dimes for 50 cents. They write the cents sign, and then they color in the heads and the tails, and I give them a dime, they turn to their neighbor, they tell about what they observe about the dime, they draw a picture on their post-it note, and they post it on the anchor chart, okay? Now this, this can be two days. You don't have to do all of this in one day. I, I spread it out for two days, okay? Same with the quarters. I read A Quarter from the Tooth Fairy. Super cute book, and it shows different ways of making a quarter. It shows different ways of making 25 cents. 
So great. So great. And then um, they have to cut out the quarters for 75 cents for the backpack and then color it and glue it in. Same with the quarters. They, um, I give them a quarter. They look at the heads and the tails and they tell their neighbor um, what they notice about the quarter. Um, and then we practice. And then calendar, um, we, I have these, I have money poems that we say for each poem. So penny, penny, easily spent, copper, bound, and worth one cent. Okay, you probably know that one. And then nickel, nickel, thick and fat, you're worth five cents. I know that. Um, let me go back real quick. When we do the penny poem, we, we count by twos. We count by twos. And so whatever day, let's see, I think we're on day, we'll be on day 97. Yeah, tomorrow's 97. So we're going to count by twos all the way to 96 when um, we count by twos. And I have them do it. I, I, I show them how to do it first a little for a little while, but then they are going to count by themselves. And then for the nickels, we count by fives uh, all the way to 120. Okay. Same with the dime. We say dime, dime, little and thin. I remember you're worth 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way to 120. And then the, the quarter, uh, quarter, quarter, big and bold. You're worth 25, I am told. And then we say 25, 50, 75, a dollar. Four quarters make a dollar. Okay. So we do all those poems every single day. And that really, really helps when we get to our money unit. They already have a good grasp, a better grasp of what these coins are, how much they're worth, what they look like. Um, and they can always look at the calendar poems if they don't remember what they are or how much they are. They can look at the poem and say, oh, yeah, uh, penny is one or nickel is five. So anyway, so that's what I do um, for my money unit. And then this is a really fun game if you want to play Bump. Here's a Valentine's Day game. Um, I have this resource in my store. Um, it's under math units or math workstations. And so if you're not familiar with Bump, this is a game that you could teach one time, one time. And then all you have to do is switch out the templates for the holiday or you, and you switch out the snap cubes for the color of the holiday so what they do is you have two dice, and I like for them to use a double dice. They roll the double dice. They add the two sums together. They have 10 snap cubes of the same color. So one child might have a red, red snap cubes. One child might have pink Valentine colors or pink and white or red and white. Um, and so then they cover, they take one snap cube and they cover the number. That's the sum of those two numbers they added together. Now, if they roll the same number again the second time, they get to stack their cube on top and they're safe. They can't get bumped off. But if their partner rolls the same number, they can bump them off and then they lose. They um, get their cube. Okay, so whoever uses all their cubes up first wins. If their partner is already stacked and they land on the same number, they lose a turn. Okay, so it's really fun. Like I said, just teach them one time. And then you can switch it out for all the different holidays. I also have these February edition subtraction mats. These are super fun. You can use um, holiday erasers for them to make story problems. So you can use Valentine erasers, heart erasers. You can even use conversation candy hearts. They can put the candy hearts on the mat and they can create their own number sentences and their own story problems. I even have cards that have story problems on them that you can use. All these different cards, you can cut out and put them on a ring, and then you can read the story problem. They can build it with their um, conversation hearts or erasers. You can use Hershey Kisses. You can use plastic jewels, plastic hearts, plastic lips, whatever. Make it make it fun. Make it fun. Um, so that's really fun. That these, This is also in my store. And then if you need a newsletter template, this is, this is what my newsletters look like. My newsletters are editable, so you can um, get the newsletters for the whole year. It's got every month and holiday for each newsletter. At the top, you can write your own name in the blank at the top, okay? You can click on the picture. It'll take you to the resource later. Um, so I put important dates. I put math. What are we learning in math? What are we learning in social studies and spelling and ELA and science? So um, I have these for every month and holiday, so you're welcome to check those out if you want to. So at the end today, remember, you're going to get um, an hour 
probably an hour and a half worth of uh, PD credit today because I'm not quite finished yet. But um, just remember, this is what the certificate looks like in case you want me to send you a certificate. Just make sure you put your complete name on, on the message so I know. Now, if you're not on my email list or if you already on my email list and you have not received my free American Symbols cross-curricular lesson plans, you need to sign up, okay? These are free, okay? So I have free lesson plans and it's all what I just showed you, but it's free. So you get one lesson a day for five days. You get um, the reading workshop one the first day. The second day you get the um, writing, writing workshop one and then you get the poetry one and then you get, I'm sorry, the math one and then you get the science and then you get the social studies, okay? So um, I have a link um, in this download, whenever you download it later on, you can click on it. Here's the, here's the YouTube channel, my YouTube channel that shows what is inside of this freebie. Okay. So, um, like I said, you get five free lessons every day. Plus I will give you, um, blog posts that you can read, podcast episodes that you can read or listen to, sorry. Um, YouTube videos that you can watch of my class. I have tons of stuff in those emails. So if you haven't signed up, this is your chance, okay? So as it, this is gonna last for the whole month of February, okay? So I'm gonna show you real quick um, what these lessons look like. Let's see here. Hello, Hello fabulous teachers. teachers. This is Kara Rickman from Create Your Balance for Literacy. Do you love learning about American Symbols with free cross-curricular lesson plans? These lesson plans include objectives, suggested metric text, anchor charts, skill cards, interactive notebooks, and writing productivities. For Reader's Workshop, the students are going to read facts about George Washington and read a picture book of George Washington. For Writer's Workshop, the students are going to write a timeline about George Washington's life and read in 1776. For Math Workshop, your students can identify a penny and how much it's worth, reading Benny's Pennies, and filling out an anchor chart. For social studies, your students can write facts and read about American symbols and read the book called American Symbols. And for science, your students can hypothesize and experiment how a penny will change with vinegar and salt, and you're gonna read Why is the Statue of Liberty Green? Sign up on my email list to get your free lesson plans. Let's take your classroom to the next level. Bye-bye. Okay, so I'm going to go through um, each lesson with you, and I'm going to put a link in the comments for to sign up for my email list, okay, if you're interested in that. So the first lesson, like I said, is Reader's Workshop. So it's, the objective, objective is I can read facts about George Washington. So you're going to read um, the uh, picture book of George Washington, and you're going to do an interactive notebook of George Washington and write different facts about him. And then I have the anchor chart already there for you, okay? Um, and so this all goes together on the same day for Reader's Workshop for lesson number one. Lesson number two on the second day is the Writer's Workshop, okay? And so you can read in 1776, they're going to write a timeline of George Washington's life, okay? So they're going to put all the different dates in there. Of, of different parts of his life, okay? And so um, then they're gonna read, they're, you're gonna also show them the anchor chart, who is George Washington. So that's by Jean Marzolo, that's a great story. I think it's actually a poem, it's a poetry book. And then for math workshop, you're going to um, read Benny's Pennies, and this is the first, this is the first lesson for money, okay? So I have the anchor chart of the penny already in there for you. It's blank, and so you can have the kids write um, different penny penny observations on their um, post-it notes, and then they can post it on the anchor chart, okay? So, and then they're gonna color the heads and the tails of the penny, okay? So that's math. And then social studies, they're gonna do, um, you're gonna read American Symbols by Melissa Ann Ferguson, and it says, I can read and write facts about American Symbols, and then they're gonna have an interactive notebook and they're gonna color the pictures, they're gonna cut them out and glue them onto the circles. And then you can have them draw 
their favorite American symbol and then post it on the anchor chart. So there's space for an American flag, the bald eagle, the White House, the Statue of Liberty, the Liberty Bell, and Mount Rushmore. And then um, you can have them do that. And then for science, they're going to do the pretty pennies. Excuse me. So if you're interested in doing the pretty pennies, here it is. And it's free in my if you sign up on my email list. So I just posted the link at the very bottom um, for my email list. If you're interested, you can click on that to sign up, okay? You're going to read, why is the Statue of Liberty green? And then you're going to talk about the scientific method um, and have them hypothesize and experiment how the penny will change when vinegar and salt are added, okay? So you guys can sign up for that if you want. Now, or you can skip the freebies and you can get more, okay? If you could have, you could have all of these engaging lessons that are already laid out in my membership, okay? My membership is called Cross Curricular Connections. So if you sign up for my membership today, you get a, a free mentor text for American Symbols, okay? You can get the picture book of George Washington, you can get Abraham Lincoln, you can get Duck for President, or you can get American Symbols. I will send you a free book from Amazon as my free gift if you sign up for my membership today, okay? So those are your choices. George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Duck for President, and American Symbols, okay? Now, this membership has 48 lessons for the whole thematic unit. The email list has only one lesson per subject, but this gives you more. So there's 48 more lessons for you to do the whole unit, okay? It's got reading, writing, poetry, math, science, and social studies. All right, so let's watch this one. Hello, Hello fabulous, fabulous teachers. teachers. This, this is Kara Rickman from Create Your Balance with Literacy. I'm excited to show you my 48 cross curricular lesson plans for American Symbols. Did you like the lessons that you received for free from the emails? What if I told you there's more? You could have 48 more lessons just at your fingertips. Let's take your classroom to the next level. For Reader's Workshop, the objective is I can learn nonfiction text features and read about facts about George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. For Writer's Workshop, the objectives are I can write about being a president and research my favorite American symbol. For Math Workshop, the objectives are I can identify and count a penny, nickel, dime, and a quarter. For Social Studies, the objective is I can identify and write about American symbols. All of this could be yours exclusively inside of my cross-curricular membership, cross-curricular connections. Let's take your classroom to the next level. Okay. So that's what it looks like. And so with each lesson, which each, with each unit, I have an objective. There is a suggested mentor text. I have a list of all the mentor texts that you need for the unit. You don't have to go hunting for them. There's a whole list of reading, writing, math, science, social studies, and, and math, and um, poetry, okay? Um, inside of that, you have an interactive notebook. You have an anchor chart. You have a writing craftivity. There's tons and tons of things that you can choose from. So I'm giving you guys the level one. There's, I have two levels, okay? Level one is $10 for today only, okay? So you get unlimited access to my 400 resources for my TPT store, plus new ones that I make each month, okay? You get all of my webinars that I've ever, ever made, that I've ever trained on Facebook, okay? All of my webinars are already on the membership. You can watch them whenever you want to, okay? Reader's Workshop, Writer's Workshop, Guided Reading, um, Fahrenheit Friday, um, Poetry, Author Studies, um, Literature Circles, all of that is already on there. Plus all my YouTube videos of my classroom, all the lesson plans that are exclusive for my membership. That means nobody else can get them but you guys, okay? If you're already in my membership, then the um, American Symbols that you just saw is already there. It's under the January lesson plan, I'm sorry, February lesson plans. So if you're watching and you're in my membership, you wanna go check that out so you can download it, okay? All of that's already there. Plus you have all my podcast episodes. My podcast is Teaching Cross Curricular Made Easy, okay? So just for today, my membership is $10 a month. You can get it for $10 a month forever, okay? If you are not satisfied within 14 days, 
You can get your money back, guaranteed, okay? You will not hurt my feelings. Level two is all the same thing that level one has, but it's 15 a month just for today, okay? It has 400 plus resources from my TPT store. Anything you saw today on this slide, on this webinar is already in the membership. You get easy access, all of it, okay? You get all the webinars I've ever taught. You get all the exclusive lesson plans for all the thematic units. You get one-to-one -one coaching calls with me as needed. So the best part about level two is that you are in a, an exclusive Kajabi community. And inside the community, you can have a place where we can ask questions. You can ask questions for me and I can answer them. We can have live coaching calls with each other and I can help you with whatever you're struggling with. I can help you with t-test goals. I can help you with an observation lesson. I can help you with mentor texts. I can help you with behavior management. I can help you with um, team leader um, things that you need help with if you're the team leader. Um, I can help you with curriculum. Whatever you need, I'm there for you, okay? So if you need a coaching call, this is the best part about level two because each month we're gonna have a coaching call together. Um, then you get my podcast, and also you get my courses that I've, um, that I've created. I have a math workshop course and I have a writer's workshop course. Um, plus new courses that I make each year, I will add to level two, okay? So what does the membership include? It's 400 resources. So I have 58 back to school resources, a year long poetry bundle, 128 linking literature resources, 23 math workshop resources, 47 science investigations, five author studies, which include Kevin Hanks, Laura Numeroff, Patricia Polacco, Jan Brett, and Tommy DePaula. 20, oh, and Peter Reynolds. I'm working on Peter Reynolds right now. Um, 20 writer's workshop resources, 19 reader's workshop and reader's theater resources, and then all of the thematic units that I share with you during the webinar. So all about me, apples, community helpers, Christopher Columbus, pumpkins, owls, bats, scarecrows, Native Americans, winter, Christmas around the world, penguins, Arctic animals, weather, objects in the sky, president, American symbols, Texas, rainforest, insects, plants, life cycles, rocks and fossils, ocean, sea life. And I have 13 farmhouse decor resources. If your classroom is a farmhouse decor, you're in luck. Okay, and then... The webinars that I've recorded and I have all in the memberships are Writer's Workshop, Reader's Workshop, Math Workshop, Literacy Centers, Teaching Cross-Curricular, Creative Fund for Back to School, and on all the months of the year from September to May, Fairy Tale Writing, Procedural Writing, Nonfiction Writing, Literature Circles, and po Focus Poetry, Behavior Management, Guided Reading, and Fahrenheit Friday, okay? These are the two courses that I have in the level two. How to launch writer's workshop from day one. It's called From Scribbles to Stories. I just gave a reboot um, last month in January about writer's workshop reboot. Let your writer soar in 2024. All of those lessons that I gave are already there in the course. I added all of those new lessons. The new modules are already in the course, okay? And then the Math Workshop Magic, Empowering K2 Mathematicians. I teach you how to set up your math stations and how to differentiate your math stations, how to use math literature, how to use your calendar. I gave you a little snippet of my calendar time today when I did the money poems and the money. Um, so I go through all of that. How to teach writing in math. Lots of great games and activities um, to keep your kids engaged during math time. So that's another course. Each course is worth six hours. If you complete each course, I'll give you a six hour certificate. Pretty cool. So the total value of all this is $500, but you get it for 180, okay? That's a great deal. So like I said, level one is $10 a month. Level two is $15 a month. So after 14 days, if you're not satisfied, you'll get your money back. You'll get your money back guaranteed. So there's a link, um, if you scroll all the way up to the top, of the comments, there's a link that it says Kajabi. Um, and so if you click on the link for Kajabi and that you can check out these two levels of memberships um, and then see if you're interested in those. So like I said, for today only, level one is 10, level two is 15. Now, if you sign up today, you get a free mentor text, okay? 
So like I said, you can get George Washington or Abraham Lincoln or Duck for President or American Symbols for free. And I will send them, send you your free book. Okay? All right. So we're going to pick a third winner today. And let's see who else I have. Let's see. Tammy Daniels. Tammy Daniels, you are my third winner. Congratulations, Tammy. Congratulations. That's awesome. Okay, so if you won today, my winners are Karen, Alla, and Tammy. And um, you guys can choose between the weather thematic unit or the America American Symbols thematic unit or voting and elections, story companion, or you can choose the money madness unit. Okay, so just let me know in the comments which one you would like, and then I will send it to you ASAP, okay? So thank you guys so much for joining me today. I love spending this time with you. I love sharing with you all the fabulous things that you could do for February for each month. If you have any teacher friends that you would like to invite to our Facebook group, please do. I love new teachers that come into our group. Um, and so thank you so much for joining me and I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Okay. And enjoy your kids this week. Have a great week. Have a great groundhog day. Okay. So until next time, love you guys and I'll see you.